All right, what's popping, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing oh so well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. Specifically, I'm talking about an article published by Bleacher Report regarding Chelsea, Frank Lampard, and his future plans with apparent sources close to Chelsea or sources close to Bleacher Report and Chelsea. Regardless, they claim they have sources. It talks about Lamps' future plans in terms of players he wants to bring in, players he is wary about, and just generally how they plan to move forward, which is interesting because it shows a great deal of faith in Frank Lampard, as the club should have. Generally, Chelsea have been massively overachieving this season. It's just taken funny turns at times when they've made silly mistakes. Still, it's interesting. Before we get into it, a quick reminder to you guys to please subscribe to Football Therapy. If you are indeed new to the channel, please sub, hit that bell notifications icon. Remember, that is important. Why not like the video to help me out? Follow me on Instagram to hang out with me on Instagram Lives and ask me questions and talk about football. All right, let's get into it. So the winter break brings loads of fun and there's loads of intense drama to follow this winter break this season. Of course, epic matchups between Tottenham and Manchester United coming next in the Premier League which are both in their own right six pointers huge huge massive games against two clubs that have both you know really really strengthened in the January window in terms of bringing in excellent players like Bruno Fernandes and Steven Bergwijn amazing players so that's huge and there's just the small matter of Bayern Munich, Robert Lewandowski, Serge Gnabry all those guys coming to Stamford Bridge. Lots hangs in the balance this season but the truth is Chelsea are still in a transitional season, whichever way you look at it. I mean, they haven't made any signings. There is that massive looming shadow of Eden Hazard, and that will probably last for maybe even another season, considering how long he carried Chelsea. Obviously, a new young coach in Frank Lampard, who has some big ideas big plans and is yet to impose them onto Chelsea. So understandably they're already trying to be smart and make plans for next season starting with transfer business in the summer. Now there is this article on Bleacher Report regarding Chelsea. If you want to check it out just google Bleacher Report Chelsea and it's one of them I think it was published yesterday. Go and have a read but I'm going to just consolidate some general themes, talk about it with you guys. So Lampard does want to bring people in and apparently sources close to Bleacher Report were told that he's looking for character and personality those two key attributes of the players he brings in not necessarily just numbers goals and assists he's looking for the mentality now that is obviously a superb thing off the bat Frank Lampard was part of that sort of never die Chelsea team you know super headstrong and that's what saw them over the line in many many games competitions title charges he probably looks at this Chelsea side that he's got appreciates the young talent but probably sees it is sorely lacking some of that mental steel it doesn't have to be experience and age just a sort of attribute of uh, character like this article is saying so I respect that already and that's a positive move in the right direction but he wants to be careful not to squish the hopes of all these young academy products that he's been nurturing that do have a great deal of talent the article says so much has gone into integrating academy products within the setup that they can't risk players like Tammy Abraham Mason Mount Callum Hudson-Odoi becoming disillusioned by the impact of new additions yes he sees weaknesses in the squad but it is a balancing act now to bring in the right Right talent with the right headstrong attitudes yet continuing to nurture this young superb talent so this is interesting people were assuming Lampard doesn't have control of signings because he absolutely did want to bring in a signing this January and he was basically robbed of that opportunity in many ways he was left frustrated visible visibly frustrated Bleacher Report go on to say Lampard does not have full control of signings but he does have a major say on potential deals like those of Sancho or Wilfred Zaha. He knows that one wrong move on a big money signing could lead to his removal from the manager's seat. Chelsea want to keep youngsters motivated yet grounded yet inspired for next season. So it's a balancing act like I said. It's really interesting to hear about how Lampard has some sort of say. Obviously 
Chelsea want him to stay and they want him to succeed. He's got a feel-good factor around the club. His ideologies in football generally wants to entertain. Chelsea really, really want that. They know the fan base adores him. And the media loves Frank Lampard as well. He's the perfect face of Chelsea. And he's young and intelligent. And granted, he's not the best manager in the world. But he's a good coach. That's widely accepted. And he could develop into a great coach. There's already been a few coming-of-age moments for Frank Lampard in last season and indeed this season. Obviously knocking Manchester United out of the cup last season, knocking out Leeds in the playoffs, even coming to Stamford Bridge, losing but being the better team with that derby side. I mean, I saw that with my own eyes. They were much better than Chelsea that day. This season, putting in great performances against Liverpool, uh, City, beating Ajax away, having good results in the Champions League, beating both Arsenal and Tottenham away. Tottenham away in what was seemingly a sort of tactical masterclass at the time, or it was being hailed for in the media. But coming of age moments won't be enough moving forward. There needs to be consistency in this team and consistency at the moment looks like it can be developed via strengthening in certain weak areas throughout the team. So Bleacher Report then starts to talk about transfers, starting with defence. There are two issues to deal with here for Lampard, who wants a first choice left back and ideally a new top level central defender. Now it talks about Kalido Koulibaly as a central defender, I'm not sure where I sit on that. Fair enough they might want to invest big but Koulibaly will be 30 then? For the amount of money he'll cost, that is not a sound investment. And Chelsea as a club, what, were they going to give him a 12-month contract because he's over 30? Doesn't really make sense to me. But Ben Chilwell, fair enough. He's hot and cold at the moment, but I see he's got potential. But I, like many of you guys, do see the value in Alex Tellez, Grimaldo, hell, different left-backs around Europe as well. I mean, obviously, I do eventually see Ian Matson coming through and pushing for a second spot behind a first-choice left-back. But yeah, I can see the investments needed there. I can see why Chelsea would want to look at a centre half, but again, that cool Bali. Amazing, but just surely not a right investment. Right, here's the big one. Let's talk about N'Golo Kante potentially being sold in the summer. If this is going to come or lead to a huge Chelsea rebuild, who knows? I know loads of people think different things about Kante. I think, let me just say here, everybody loves N'Golo Kante. He's probably the only world-class talent, as things stand, in the Chelsea squad. He's probably like the sweetest man alive. Everyone loves him. That's not up for debate. What is up for debate is I think he's going to be like 29 soon, going on 30. Um, he's won Premier Leagues. He's won a lot of stuff. He started to maybe lose his touch a little bit. I'm not saying it won't come back. I've just seen him recently concede possession. Doesn't quite reach the tackles that he used to. And he's endured serious injuries of late for the first time in his career. Now, he's obviously on 290k a week as well, which is like by far the most amount at Chelsea, understandably. But if Real Madrid come in for with like 150 million, do Chelsea feel tempted to rebuild the whole of their squad to strengthen, to challenge with the sale of N'Golo Kante? I'm, again, I'm on the fence. I'd love for him to stay, provided Chelsea can strengthen around him. But for me, if his sale is dependent on new integral players, positions coming in, they'll actually make Chelsea challenge for a title then maybe it's time to consider it. I know people say, I'll oh, put him back in the midfield too. You can't play him in the pivot. He's never played in a lone pivot, so people need to understand that. But if he goes back into a lone two like he did at Leicester, like he did at Chelsea on the Conte, then maybe. But you know, it looks like Chelsea don't play like that at the moment. Certainly City uh, and Liverpool don't play like that. Maybe it's not the way to play in the Premier League at the moment. Maybe Chelsea look to invest that money into a more interchangeable midfielder or outfield players. Again, I'd love it to work because I do feel like he can completely clutch a game on his day. But either way, Kante could go in the summer. Who knows? Plus also Bleacher Report saying in this article that it's very dependent on what Real Madrid want to do. Apparently they're the best suitors for him. And they are very, very interested in Paul Pogba and in Kylian Mbappe. And even one of those players is going to cost a lot of money. The article finishes on the attack and potential purchases for the summer. Obviously I've talked about Jadon Sancho before on this channel. It's interesting because apparently although Frank Lampard is a huge admirer of Sancho, he wants to be 100% sure before he invests that money in on him. Sure he can see the numbers, but he wants to know no, look, if I spend £130 million pounds of Chelsea's money, is this really going to save us? Sure, he's good on the break. Sure, he's combining with a well-coached team. But could I get someone else that could just strengthen the team in a different way that would make us more solid? Do you know what I mean? He needs to be sure. Probably it's an amazing signing. It will work. But he wants to look at him 
wait till the end of the season and just see if he's the perfect choice and probably even then get him before the Euros because if he has a good Euros afterwards that could literally be an extra 30, 40, 50 million pounds. When it comes to players like Timo Werner who's linked, I don't think he's going to come to Chelsea personally. I think Chelsea will get the likes of someone like Moussa Dembele for less money and probably more of a rotational striker with Tammy rather than Werner who would demand the first team spot and would cost a lot of money and to be honest I don't think he wants to come to Chelsea. But the article rounds it down and above all it's all about assessing this Chelsea squad come May at the end of the season looking at the whole sample size. Sure Chelsea have had half a season to look at a bit more now and they can generally tell the glaring weaknesses but before starting player negotiations and putting fingers in pies and tapping up really you should assess the whole season and look where the biggest frailties in the squad is and where it makes the most sense to strengthen and also by waiting for that amount of time you can assess your targets better with their sample size so you can look at your weaknesses for longer and then you can look at the potential targets strengths for longer you yeah, dig anyway it's interesting the same recurring themes and stories going around it is interesting to see that lampard does have a big say in transfers but although he was robbed of the chance to strengthen in january he's probably okay to spend big in the summer provided he gets the support from the board but what do you guys think get down in the comment section below let me know how you think chelsea should rebuild for next season what do you think about the ngolo kante situation would you sit on the fence can you see value in both keeping or selling ngolo kante remember it's not as easy as just playing him deeper because you can play him in a two but in terms of the way the top teams in the premier league play at the moment ngolo kante doesn't seem to sit fit that tactical structure so remember that get down in the comments let me know your thoughts on it if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe like the video if you've enjoyed it why not follow me on social media we're so close to 39,000 slash 40,000 subscribers now tell your friends help me out that's it from me guys you lot enjoy the football i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby